Hello everyone, I'm Scott Morgan and this is our cotton farm, Kensal Green. And uh, of course today was going to be Camp Cotton, but unfortunately because of COVID that was cancelled. So instead of that, we're just going to show you what we're doing today and we are digging up some cotton and some polyester underwear and we're going to compare the difference. Hope you enjoy. So as you can see, I've just almost found some underwear here. These are the polyester ones and we'll see how they fare. They look quite intact. So we're going to dig up the cotton underwear now and we'll see what the difference is. Be very careful here. Quite wet too. They look a little bit fragile to me. Nice and gently. I think there's quite a bit of composting going on, all right. And they don't look to be in very good condition. Let's compare the two. Cotton against polyester underwear. Biodegrading. Hi, I'm Oliver Knox. I'm the CRDC's Professor of Soil Biology here at the University of New England in Armadale. I'm also the technical lead for soil health for Cotton Info. And yes, I have been professionally soiling my undies now for about two years. And I've got to say, I've had a great time doing it and I've had an even better time encouraging farmers to actually soil their undies as well. And more recently, school groups and other community action groups to think about soiling their undies too. Why do I want people to soil their undies? Primarily I want people to soil their undies because it's a brilliant test. It's a great way to gauge the health of their soils. Cotton as a wonderful natural fiber has been put together by that plant. It's basically stitched glucose molecule upon glucose molecule to produce cellulose. And that's the cotton that we'd use in our garments and in our threads and yarns. But for the soil, when they see that cotton, it's basically that glucose they want to get to. They want to break that cellulose fiber back down to that glucose so they can eat it. And to do that though, they need to use a number of different enzymes, which normally have to be provided by a suite of different organisms. And in order for it to be effective, those organisms need to be active. So the more degraded our pants become in our, when they're buried in the soil, the better our soil microbiology and our soil health therefore is. Here in Australia, generally the biggest limitation to that microbial activity is water, and we've seen that across a number of our buried pants. The soil health uptake around soil erundies has been brilliant, 
But now people are starting to also ask questions about, well, what, why is it that the elastic is left? Why is it that the stitching is left? And the reason for that is these are the parts of the underpant that generally contain the man-made fibers. The elastic, the stitching itself being a polycotton thread rather than a cotton thread, so it doesn't break as often. And I've got a pair of polycotton pants and a pair of cotton pants that we soiled here in Armadale last year. We had really good degradation, possibly slightly better than Scott's, um, of the cotton pants, but again you can see the elastic and the stitching is still there. The polycotton ones, much like Scott's, are still pretty much intact. But the beauty of these I like is the fact that we can see in these the weave of the polyester is still there, the lycra, the elastane is still there, but the cotton that was woven into it, in this case, has actually already been degraded by the microbiology. The fate of this polyester though is really that it will fragment and it'll end up just polluting our environment. I also like the fact that when Scott was exhuming his cotton pants, did you see the care he had to take in getting them up? They had become discolored and the discoloration is because of that microbial activity on the cotton fiber. For those that grow cotton and those that harvest cotton, we know that avoiding wetness after the bowls have matured and broken open is really important because when they first crack open, those cotton bowls produce beautiful white fiber, which is really desirable. But it doesn't take much microbial activity to start to discolor it, to give it those yellow tints and the grays that we see emerge and was present on Scott's pants to some extent but just how gentle he was with it. And the reason he was having to be gentle was because those cellulose fibers had started to be broke down already. The glucose that they're made of, the biology wanted to get access to that and it already started to break them down. I think Scott's pants are a great example of how natural fibers can break down in our environment and in our waste streams if we come to that. Whereas our polycotton represents a challenge both in terms of getting the polyester or the lycra or the elastane separated from the cotton fibers to make it a reusable product. But at the same time, if that's too difficult to do and it goes for our waste, all we're doing is polluting. And therefore, I think it's a great example again of how our choices, whether we're making cotton shirts or cotton pants, but keeping that polyester out of it because it will make things more easy to process, it will make things more easy to recover, and it will eventually lead to a, a waste stream that in theory, if that's where it ends up as waste, can be far more easily disposed of because we know that it will end up going back into our soil environment, feeding our biology, and basically helping drive the cycles of life. I'm glad Scott sold his pants. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this short video. Please, when you're thinking about your fibers and your textiles, think about their fate. Our material choices matter. It's really that important. Thank you.